Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Celebration Sunday. You guys, we're on our final Celebration Sundays. Next week is going to be our last one. So Celebration is wrapping up. But um, if you're joining me today for the first time, thank you for joining me for Celebration Sunday. I am Ruth Norton with Ruth Stamping Corner. And I am so excited to share with you guys what we're going to make today. We're going to make this amazing little um, stair step card. So you can kind of see all those different little levels and stuff. And I'll, I'll show that to you. We're going to make this beautiful card. There's so much coloring going on. So it's, it, this might be a longer video. I'm just going to warn you. There is a ton of coloring for this one. I've pulled out so many different um, Stampin' Blends. If you could see them all, if, if you could see them, you can't see them, but um, they're there. We're going to use them all. Um, but while we're waiting for everybody to join, let's talk about what's going on. Paper Pumpkin. We are in the Christmas season with Paper Pumpkin. So this is September's Paper Pumpkin. This one shipped... I think I'm getting it maybe tomorrow, maybe Tuesday. As soon as I get it, I'll go live here in my VIP group and unbox my paper pumpkin. Um, I'm hoping maybe tomorrow, tomorrow evening, maybe. We'll see. Um, and then this is October's paper pumpkin. This is a subscription period for this. is open right now. It is 10 cards, five each of two designs. You can make some beautiful Christmas cards. Get a jump start on your Christmas cards with October's paper pumpkin kit. And then we don't have a lot of details, but I think this is November's paper pumpkin kit. We don't have a lot of details about that one yet, but um, you can see all three have gorgeous little boxes. Um, I can't wait. I'm so excited. I love their Christmas kits. I think their Christmas kits are always some of the best kits, so don't miss out on paper pumpkin. All right, guys, like I said, celebration, we're wrapping up. We are in our final... Um, weeks well days of celebration today we are actually doing two product products we are doing the feels like home stamp set and also the beautifully penned paper which I'll, sh I'll share more on both of those in just a second but this is your last chance if you haven't earned all of the products that you want to earn in here you remember you get um them free with a 50 dollars purchase there are a couple with that you earn free with a hundred dollar purchase we've been over those um but if you have not earned them you were down to your final days to earn them along with that you were down to your final days of getting that starter kit for a ridiculously amazing deal the starter kit's always a great deal you get 125 in product for only 99 dollars, and then with celebration you also get to choose one of these 12 bundles for free so it's a fantastic deal your starter kit also includes free shipping you get a free paper pumpkin you get a whole bunch of business stuff from stampin up which you're not required to use as a business, but um, it's always good to just have a few extra catalogs to hand out to friends. You know, the, the catalog is, is so great just for ideas. You don't necessarily need it for um, ordering purposes, but for ideas, it is just, it's so amazing. There are hundreds of samples in the catalog, so it's always great to have a few extra of those. All right, this is what we're going to make today, this amazing little stair step card. Now, I've made these in the past, and there are a ton of different tutorials on how to make them. So I'm going to show you my way of making them. My way may not be the way that you've heard in the past, or whatever. I mean, there are different ways to do it, and you can always adjust your measurements to do it however you want to do it. So this is um, just my version of the stair step card. So I'll, we'll go, we'll do that in just a second. Um, let's talk about that beautifully penned DSP though. I have that right here. Now the beautifully penned DSP is a little bit different in that there's only um, three papers. They're double-sided so there you get six different designs but you get four each of each of these papers so if you're um, this is great for like mass producing these are all um, black and white patterns and they coordinate with the beautifully penned bundle in the um, annual catalog but they are just fantastic patterns I just love them it's a great great DSP to have and black and white patterns my paper won't be put away hold on black and white patterns are always so Good to have you can use them on nearly any project so let's start with before we get to all of our stamping coloring we're actually going to start with making the actual card base so i have a piece of five and a half by eight and a half cardstock so that's just your standard card base and i'm going to pull out my my paper trimmer for this one we're going to do a little bit of trimming first and then we're going to do some scoring so our our paper trimmers um, have a ruler on the side here, on this little arm here. Now I've taped a piece of just like printer paper to the back of this one, just about halfway down, just so we can see those measurements a little easier. You can see they're a little bit harder to see down here. So I have a piece of paper in there just so we can see those measurements on the side because we're going to be using the, the little arm on the cutter to help with our measurements. Okay, so you're going to stick your, your paper in on the five and a half inch side. I'm going to line it up on the one inch side over here. So 
So line it up against that line. Now I'm going to take my cutting blade. My cutting one is the darker one. You have a scoring one and a cutting one. And let me, before we put our paper in, let me just show you our cutting blade. I hope that the camera is going to pick this up. There is, where's my take your pick tool? I want to, there's a little line right here, um, kind of engrooved into the paper trimmer blade. And that little line lines up exactly where the blade is underneath. So when you're cutting specifically, maybe you're cutting like a two inch strip or something, that little line is gonna tell you exactly where the blade is so you know exactly where to start and stop. So with that little line in mind, we're gonna put our paper back in here, put it in at the one inch line. And let's see, I'm gonna turn my, my cutting paper cutter this way just so I can see a little bit better. So I'm going to line it up at that one inch mark where my blade is. And we are going to cut from, uh, let me look at my notes, from one inch to five and a quarter. So I'm going to slide it down to five and a quarter. Okay? So that's all we're going to do. So we cut just a line like that. Now I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to do the exact same thing to this side. So on that, line it up on that one inch mark. And this is already lined up at five and a quarter. So I'm just going to slide it back to one okay so I hope that makes sense so now we have this um, it's kind of our cardstock looks like this now so we have just some slits cut into it all right now we're gonna pull out our simply store we're using all the tools and all the blends today all right now on the eight and a half inch side you want to put this on the eight and a half inch side and you want to make sure that your cut lines are on the left hand side you don't want your cut lines over here. You want them up over here. So we're going to score at one, two, and five and a quarter, just up to that first cut line. So all I did was score one, two, and five and a quarter just up to that line. I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna do the exact same thing. At one, two, and five and a quarter. Okay, so. Both sides now have those score lines. Now, we gotta score it at four and a quarter. We don't wanna score these arms at four and a quarter, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull in a ruler just to make sure that I line up that groove. Okay, and then I'm just gonna have four and a quarter right here, and I'm just gonna score that middle section. Okay, I hope that makes sense. That's all of our scoring. That's all we need to do. So let's put our Simply Scored away. I'll recap that one more time. So on our the little tabs that we cut, we scored at one, two, and five and a quarter. We did that on both sides, one, two, and five and a quarter. And then only in the middle section, we scored at four and a quarter. I hope that makes sense. Now you can also do all the scoring on your paper trimmer. Um, that's perfectly fine too. Okay, now the folding gets a little tricky, just you can do it. So you wanna fold back on the those five and a quarter inch lines, you wanna fold back. I'm gonna fold like a mountain fold on that one inch line. And then these lines are going to, so you're gonna kinda make an N or a Z maybe, okay? Just like that. And it'll all kinda fold together. Once you kinda pinch them in place, it'll all just kinda fold together. This will fit into a standard size um, envelope. So you can mail these. They are fun to get in the mail and they stand up perfectly on a desk or a mantle or something. So, okay, so that is all this. So, that is the scoring. So, you can see it's kind of like a Z, kind of. Okay, so that is how it is cut and scored. Okay, all right, we are going to set this aside and then we're going to do our stamping. So, let's get out our Stamparatus. I wanted to stamp this one with the Stamparatus. Just because this one is so detailed and sometimes some of the details are missed on the first go around. So I already have my stamp in my Stamparatus. So I have a piece of thick white. I'm using the thick white today because it's going to kind of hang off on the side a little bit. And so I wanted something a little bit sturdier than just our basic white. So I'm using our thick white. Now because this is a cling stamp in our Stamparatus, I'm going to take out my black mat. You don't need this when you're using the cling mat, clean stamps. You need it when you use the photopolymer stamps. All right, I'm gonna stick this in. I'm gonna grab a magnet. I'm gonna stick that in. This is up in the corner, so if I need to reposition it, I can. 
So I'm using, like I said, this is this Feels Like Home stamp set. This is a free one you can get with Celebration. It's a beautiful stamp set. I'm going to use Memento Coloring with Blends. Now, if you were going to watercolor this image, you would want to use something like Stazon. But because we're using um, Stampin' Blends, we're going to use Memento. Okay, give that a good press. And let's see. Oh, see, we forgot like half the tree back here. All right, let's see. I think I'm going to stamp it just one more time. Just to make sure we get a nice clean image. I really want this side over here. Okay. Let's see, how do we do? Pretty good. It's a little dark, but that's okay. We, Once we get it all colored, it will be fantastic. So there's our beautiful image. All right, so I'm going to stick this back in here. Just to protect my, my surface with the ink. All right. <clears throat> we are ready to color. So like I said, guys, this is going to be, there's a lot of coloring. Look, I already have fingerprints all over it. Oh my gosh. How does that happen? How do I get so messy when I stamp? Am I the only one? Do you guys do that too? All right. We're going to start with the door. I'm using um, Cajun Craze Stampin' Blends. Now, normally my preference of coloring with Stampin' Blends is to start with the dark and then blend out with the light. With this one, because some of the images are pretty small, I'm actually just gonna go in with the light and then add some darker areas. Let me pull this in so you guys can see kind of where we're aiming for. Um, plus, with this image, I really like the look of some of those harsher dark lines. So by starting with my lighter one first, then I'm, I'm gonna get those harsher dark lines. Um, so I'm gonna go in, we're doing the door. Um, I'm gonna, let me use my brush end. This might take a while with my with my um, bullet tips. So we're gonna go in with the brush. I'm using the light and I really just wanna kinda cover the, the whole door. All right, you might wanna talk amongst yourselves. This might take a while. So what else is, is going on? What can I talk about? So I am actually prepping my, my Christmas card stamp -a stack That is coming in October. It is, um, I think it's October 9th. It's the second Saturday of October. It is a local in-person class for anybody that is in Albuquerque. Now, I will say that um, pre-registration is required. Pre um, registration open on Monday, and I only have four spots left. So if you have not RSVP'd for it, if you are local in the Albuquerque area, and you have not RSVP'd for it, and you want to come to it, I suggest signing up like today. Sooner rather than later, I do expect this to sell out by the end of the week, if not, you know, by later today or tomorrow. So... This class is always one of my my only classes to well no I sell I sell out of quite a few of my classes but this is one of the ones that is always pretty highly anticipated. You get 15 cards. It's $25. It's such a good deal. All right, now you'll see that I went in with the dark a little bit around just kind of the edges. Now, I'm not going to blend it too much, but I do want to just go in with the light just a little bit. And that's pretty much it. I really want those harsh lines to really stand out. That's really going to help give us kind of that watercolor look. All right, so that was Cajun Craze. All right, let's put, where am I going to put my markers? Maybe I'll just put them away as I use them. What an idea. All right, now let's go in with our cinnamon cider. Now I use cinnamon cider for all of my, my baskets, all except the one on the bike. So let's, I'm just going to go in. This is my light. I'm just kind of filling them in the little pots down here and let's see just kind of go around those flowers it's a small little detailed image but it is it's really stunning and you don't have to color it if you were making you know a bunch of these you really don't have to color them I think like heat embossed and a metallic color would be gorgeous and just with the dark just a little bit kind of under the leaves along the sides just kind of where you're going to get a little bit of shading and then just real quick back with the light i'm not doing too much blending just kind of tapping it around and that's the cinnamon cider so we'll put that away all right let's go in now let's do our our tree here so i have old olive now for this one i'm really going to just use the the dark old olive for our tree and I'm not going to be too particular about staying in the lines. We're just kind of covering all these leaves. If I go out of the, the lines, that's okay. It's going to give more of a organic tree kind of look. I'm just really kind of scribbling around. 
I'm not even going to worry about shading on this because it's just, it's not big enough to worry about shading. I'll go down the little trunks here. I'm not going to worry about getting those to be brown. You can go in with brown if you want, but we really just need to get some color on the tree. That's really all we want to do. All right. So that is all with my dark. Now with my light, I'm going to go in and add to the leaves on some of these plants here. This little bush here. I don't know what any of these plants are. I am not a a plant person. I don't know any of the plants. So I'm just doing that one. The other ones we're all going to make flowers. So that's the only one I'm doing with the light old olive. Okay. Let's do our bike. I have misty moonlight. I'm going to just use the dark. I'm not even going to use the light. I'm going to use my bullet tip and I'm just going to go around the just these areas of the bike that would be blue. I'm going to go ahead and do the seat blue too. Just pretty much all of these bikes, like the top of the, the rim there, this little rim here, and that's pretty much it. Just want to get some color on that, and I only use the, the dark misty moonlight there. All right, Daffodil Delight. This is the dark Daffodil Delight, and we're just going to go in with these little flowers down here. I'm going to color those kind of the same way I colored the tree. I'm not going to be too particular about being exact with those. And then these little flowers up here, I'm going to add some color to. Okay. That was Dark Daffodil Delight. And then Dark Poppy Parade for these flowers. I'm just going to fill up a little basket with red flowers. Okay. For our door, I have light pool party just for the window here. I'm going to fill that in just like that and all right now we're going to bring in our crumb cake. I am going to use the dark one for the basket. We're not going to do a lot of shading on this one. The basket's pretty small so we're not going to do a lot of shading. Now for the frame of the door, you see is this crumb cake? Yeah. For the frame of the door I'm going to go around with my light and color it all in. Make sure you color between the tire here because you're going to be able to see through those spokes there on the tire. Okay. And up the side here. Around the tree. This is a card that I think I would make for, you know, maybe like a new neighbor. Maybe, um, maybe a friend who's moving or who has recently moved. But I don't think I'd make like a hundred of these. All right, now with my dark, I'm just going in where there'd be dark areas, like where the tree is overlapping it. There's going to be a shadow cast there. This little bush back here will cast a little bit of shadow. The bike will. So down here. And then there's some texture lines in the stamp. So I'm making sure those are going to be dark too. So again, I'm not going to do a lot of blending out on this. I'm just going to kind of tap those harsh lines just a little bit, just to make them look a little bit more organic but I want to mostly keep those dark, harsher lines because you're really going to get a lot of texture with that. So I hope you can see. All right, you guys, we're, we're moving along. We're almost there. All right, what do I have left? I have, okay, what's going to do? I have light basic black for the tires of my bike. I'm just going to go through around the tires. They're such small images, so just take your time. Be really careful. All right, that's it. No blending. You can use the stamp and write marker too if you um, just want to use that. It has a smaller tip, so that might be a better bet. Okay, so gray granite. I'm making sure I have the right grays here. Okay, so gray granite. I'm going to start with my light. I'm going to use my brush tip. And this is going to be the kind of the the outside of this and I'm just going to kind of go just a little bit above and out to the side of the images here um, so just using my light gray granite all the way kind of off to the side here we are going to be die cutting this with our stitch rectangle die so I don't want to go all the way to the edge of my paper I'm just going to go a little bit beyond where the where it ends here, do it behind the bike. Okay, now this side. Make sure to fill in all those little images between the plants just so you don't have any 
like gaps in your wall. Okay, and just a little bit beyond this side too. I'm just using my brush tip. It just goes, it goes really quick with the brush tip. All right, all right. Now we're going to come in with our dark, and we're just going to add some of those darker areas, like around the the door, around the plants. And this I'm not being too specific with either. So just behind the bike, there's going to be shadows behind the bike. So add some darker areas there. And then again, like back here where the tree is, it's going to be some darker areas. All right, just kind of like that above the door a little bit. All right, now back in with my, my light. Again, we're not really blending it. Just want to kind of soften those lines just a little bit but I really want to make sure to leave those dark and light distinctions just kind of fill those in okay really nice I love it love how this is coming along all right so that was gray granite so our last color that we're using is smoky slate and we're going to do the, the ground the same way I'm going to start with my light smoky slate and this time I'm going to flip it upside down just so I can so you know what my brush tip is need a new smoky slate. Um, we're going to flip it upside down just to kind of get that same effect. I want to just brush them out this way. Um, we're just going to go beyond the image just a little bit. Again, we're going to be trimming this out so it doesn't have to be perfect. Make sure to get between the bike wheels there. And then the artist has put in all of this, all of these lines where the shadow is. So let me let's just try to finish that up. Okay. So all of these little, these dark lines, that's just where I'm going to come in with my dark. I'm not going to be too neat or precise with it because it's all just, you know, it's shadows. You guys, you don't have to be super exact with it back here. Okay. So just come in real quick with your light. Just kind of soften those just a little bit, but you want to make sure you leave lots of that color distinction. All right, and that is our image. I just, I love it with the, leaving those um, harsh dark lines, it really gives it kind of a watercolor look. So I really like it, I love it. All right, we're gonna trim this out. I have a um, rectangle from the Stitch Rectangle Dies. Now I am gonna tape this down because the last thing we wanna do right now is mess it up. <laughs> So I'm going to tape it down with some post-it tape. Let me bring in my cut and emboss machine. We're going to use our big one this time. This is a, a bigger die. I'm going to get my plates. I'm going to some of my papers to stick my plates. All right, so um, I have number one, number two, one, number three. Now, when you're die cutting a, a an image like this rectangle that has real straight lines, you wanna make sure you put it in at an angle. Not only is that gonna be um, a better cut for you, but it's going to be less pressure on your machine, so your plates will actually warp a little less. If you put it in um, straight with that line hitting at the, the little rollers in here, straight on, it's gonna be a lot of pressure on your machine, and it might cause a lot of warping in your plates. Plus, it's gonna be a lot harder for you to get it through. So by just distributing that that pressure diagonally, it's gonna be much better for not only your machine, but for your cut, for your die, and for you in general to cut it out. Isn't that beautiful? I love it. All right, now that was the hard part. It's all just assembly now, so let's pull in our card base. We've already scored and cut our card base, so we're going to put some of that beautiful, beautifully pinned DSP on it. Um, I have all the measurements for the DSP in my video description it'll all be on my blog give me about a half an hour or so maybe 45 minutes after the the video it'll all be on my blog it's all in the video description too so i have a piece that is this is three and three eighths by four and a quarter this is going to go right in that center panel just a little bit of a border all right i have two pieces that are seven eighths by three and one eighth these are going to go onto these little sides right here. So just kind of tuck it down. Make sure you have just a little bit of a border, just like that. This one goes on this side. 
I have two little tiny squares that are 7 eighths by 7 eighths. These are going to go, so my stamp and seal wants to play nice. These are going to go just on these little squares here. Just line them up just like that. And then I have one more piece of that beautifully pinned DSP. This is um, five and a half by one. And this is gonna go on the inside of our card, just to add a little bit of, of color to the inside of our card. Oops, I want my scallops going the other way. You guys, are you guys, um, do you have um, patterns that you're pretty particular about? With scallops, I always want them going this way. Isn't that, isn't that weird? <laughs> it's so weird, I think. But I'm very particular about that. All right, so we're gonna go in and put our greeting on, or our image on here, but I wanna add a little bit more to our image. So I have a square doily here, and I'm just gonna cut this guy in half. Nobody's ever gonna see it, so you know, I really hacked that up. Um, a little bit of adhesive right in the middle, top and bottom, and we're going to put that doily. I'm gonna just line it up. We just want a little bit of that, that edge at the top, just like that, if I can get it straight. It's pretty straight, okay. And the bottom as well, just gonna wanna just try to line it up. The bottom, um, not as much as gonna show on the bottom. Let me get that just a little bit closer. It's so hard for me to see on this paper. Okay, just like that. So I hope you guys can see that doily, top and bottom. Just adds a little bit of something extra. All right, I need, I need some dimensionals. Dimensionals, okay. Now the, this piece is gonna hang over our um, edges here so make sure when you're putting on your dimensionals you are not putting them all the way to the edge because they're gonna hang over so I'm only gonna put dimensionals um, kind of over those doilies those doily areas in the center a couple in the middle here oh and you know what before we add this I shouldn't even be taking off these backings but we need to add some Baker's twine I have to tie a bow that's probably why I forgot I was trying to forget all right <laughs> Um, I have a baker's twine here. This is the, the gray granite or the gray. I don't know if it's smoky slate or gray granite. I don't know what it is, but we're going to wrap it around a couple of times. Ugh. Okay. The pressure of a bow, you guys, I don't know what it is. You know what? Let me get this out. Let me, where is it? Here it is. This is my um, silicone mat. I want to be able to put my, um, since I took my backings off, I can put my um, piece down on that silicone mat. It's not going to stick to it. And it's actually going to maybe even hold it in place a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to wrap this twice. Man, I am really making this look harder than it is. Jeez. Me and bows. Ugh. But they add so much. They're so pretty. Okay. So I'm going to tie a knot with Baker's Twine. I like to tie a knot first because that really, um, really helps tie bows, I find. If you are a professional bow tire, you can, you may want to, you can skip that step. Okay. I think we're good with that. I'm going to leave the ends kind of long and loopy. So let's see. Can I cut that? Okay. All right. We did it. I'm going to peel this off my silicone mat. My dimensionals will be nice and sticky still. We won't have lost anything there. Pull this back in. This is going to go right onto our card base just like this. Now for a greeting, I need a greeting. Um, I, ooh, where to go? Here it is. I've already preheat embossed and die and fussy cut. There's no die for these, but I preheat embossed and fussy cut from the biggest wish. This hello. There are really beautiful greetings in the feels like home set, but, um, they're a little small and I just didn't feel like any of them really went anywhere on here. So you can always stamp one on the inside, but um, I really like this, especially for maybe like a new neighbor. This would be really pretty, a really fun card. So I'm just gonna cut a little piece of a dimensional. You can also use the little mini dimensionals. I'm just gonna stick that on the back of my O. And then I'm gonna just gonna use some of my Tombow here, just on the top of my other letters. Peel that off. This is just gonna kind of hang off the side here. Just down at the bottom. Hello. I thought this would be great for a new neighbor or even a friend. Anybody you really want to give this to. All right, finishing touch. I have some metallic pearls here. Where's my taper pick tool? And we're going to do five. I'm going to do, let's see, one here. You can do as many as you want. One 
here. And a couple more down on the bottom corner here. One and one there. Okay, so that is that is our card. That is our beautiful Feels Like Home stair step card. Now I will say this was not on my um on my first, you know, go around of celebration. This wasn't even on my list. It's not really my style, but the more I played with it, the more I loved it. So don't look past this one just because this might not be your style. This might be a um a really great card to have. Now normally at the end of celebration Sunday I show you what you could possibly put in a starter kit. If you wanted to join my team, I don't have that today. Um, the weekend kind of got away from me, so I didn't have time to prep that. But I think you guys kind of get the idea. You get to choose 125 in product for $99. You can join my team anytime. There's no commitment to sell or buy. It's just a great way to get um, a great deal on products. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. I will be back on Wednesday in my business page at 10 a.m., probably at 10 a.m. Again, I have to check um, meeting schedules. But um, I will also be back here in my VIP group, hopefully maybe tomorrow or Tuesday night with my paper pumpkin. As soon as it arrives, I will come in on and show you guys. So watch for those announcements in my VIP group and in my um, business page on when I'll be live this week. If you have any questions on anything, please let me know. If you need to shop for supplies, please head to my online stores. All orders receive a PDF with three exclusive projects. If your order is over $50 or more, you're also going to receive a PDF or a it may take kit with the coordinating to coordinate with that PDF. If your order is over $75, you're also going to receive some free gifts in celebration of my birthday month this month. And if you're on Facebook, I'd love it if you shared this with your crafty friends. If you're on um, YouTube, please like and subscribe to my channel. That really helps me out. Um, and until I see you guys again next time, have a great rest of your weekend. Bye.